Hi everyone, um, I'm Sunil Paul. Um, first of all, thank you for showing up. There are so many things going on in the world, and you're here to do something interesting, something new, and something for the first time ever to do a hackathon around the idea of clean web. And so I want to thank you for that. We are sold out. I mean, this event, when we started organizing, uh, the four of us, Suchi and Blake and Julian, about three months ago, we were thinking, gosh, if we got, what, 20 people to show up, that'd be great. <laughs> we got 161 registrations. 100, 116, some odd, how many, 160? 161 registrants, and still a number of people on the wait list. So this is definitely a phenomena, uh, even just as we started here. So thank you very much. And I also want to just say thank you to uh, co-organizers of the event, Suchi, uh, who has done a fantastic job, uh, Blake, uh, fantastic job with t-shirts and organizing and APIs, and Julian with the facilities and, uh, and offering up uh, Perry Selma. Thank you uh, to everyone. Um, why? Turn that off. <laughs> so, I want to tell you just a bit about Clean Web. Um, can we get uh, the other slide back up to the top, please? Uh, the dinosaur slide. <laughs> so, um, we've got a lot of problems going on. We've got challenges to the actual existence of our civilization. And that might sound like, come on, really, but it really is true. We are at a point in the course of human civilization when the, the future of our society is literally at risk. It's at risk from climate change. We all have heard the numbers. The runaway uh, use of fossil fuels and, and agriculture has resulted in a climate that is increasingly unstable. We've got disastrous climate events already starting to happen, and uh, we know for sure more on the way. Um, we've got constraints on water, um, droughts in the southwest United States, in Australia, in the Middle East, the conflict in Sudan. Uh, Many people have attributed to the lack of water. Our entire society is approaching crisis and ready to go over the edge. Um, it's a crisis that was, has been 100 years in the making. And uh, the root of that, of that crisis is really the way that we live our lives, the way that we uh, engage the, the, the use of our resources. And it took 100 years to get here. It took 100 years to get here. And the challenge for all of us is how can we fix this problem in just a few decades? It took 100 years to get here. How can we fix it in just a few decades? So in 2002, I started investing in Clean Tech. Um, I was one of the first investors into NanoSolar. Uh, Created venture funds, great ventures to, to focus on clean tech. We invested in companies like Solzon, to our public, doing biofuels, uh, extreme power, doing large scale storage, um, companies doing other kinds of solar technology, uh, other biofuels, all the stuff that you know about and you associate with clean tech. So, you know, we pursued that because we thought there's an opportunity to make a big difference and an opportunity to make a lot of money. And it's, it's very out. But we have to move even faster. And how can we solve this problem in just a few decades? Well, there's something new that's happening. <coughs> it's been happening for decades. But this technology, information technology, has been moving along. And you guys all know the stats on Moore's Law and the incredible acceleration. And this thing was a supercomputer just a few dec decades ago, and now it fits in my pocket. What can we do with that? This is what the sort of opportunity around Clean Web is. I don't mean just the iPhone from Apple, of course. <laughs> um,
could we use information technology to reconfigure the world, to reconfigure business models, reconfigure uh, the, the, the supply channels uh, in a way, and reconfigure capital efficiency, all these kinds of things, so that we can actually address these massive problems in just decades, even though they took hundreds of years to, to build them. Um, in this room, you guys have the power to make it happen. There aren't that many people in the world who really get information technology deeply. There aren't that many people in the, group of the world who really get the opportunity around solar and how to use buildings and all these other things. And even if you don't know all that stuff, I guarantee you, you wouldn't be here unless you knew at least a little something about one of those topics. And, you know, to use an overused phrase, but I'm straight out of Hollywood, with great power comes great responsibility. We have this opportunity, you have this opportunity to do something great. And uh, Clean Web is a way of thinking about that, that great opportunity. Um, so let's go to the next slide. Not that. <laughs> there we go. So how do you know that you're doing something Clean Web? Well, first, of course, it's IT centric. Second, it's addressing resource constraints, making things more efficient. Kind of got all that, right? If you wouldn't be here, I don't think you could get those. But what's the number one way you know it's clean web? It's awesome! <laughs> it, it, it cannot be something that just does something a little bit better. Now, in 24 hours, 36 hours, you're going to go create something that's going to be a little bit better. But the vision, something awesome. Life's got to be more awesome with clean web. And it can be. And that is an important criteria. If it doesn't make things awesome, then why do it? So um, let's talk a little bit about where we came from and where we're going. Let's go to that slide there. So this evolution of, of what's happened, we started out with uh, a lot of very research intensive approaches starting back in the 70s to try to address uh, climate and energy challenges and, and water resource constraints. A lot of focus on R&D by academia and government. Uh, we've spent billions of dollars on that uh, already. Starting in the, in the 2000s, started devoting a lot of attention to it. Uh, now billions of dollars devoted towards deploying solar and, and fuel cells and uh, wind, etc. And now we've got this opportunity with CleanWeb to go from a very infrastructure intensive, very hardware intensive approach something that's uh, really leveraging information technology. And the time frames involved have gone from multi-decades to uh, you know, around a decade to deploy infrastructure to internet time. I mean, you can literally create things quickly. You can create things within months. You can create things within years that scale. We're going to try to create something interesting in 24 to 36 hours. Um, let's go to the next slide. Um, so getting there is going to continue to be challenging. We've got uh, Clean Web has lots of interesting obstacles that we're going to have to overcome. Uh, a lot of it is just <coughs> starting from the bottom, just lack of awareness uh, around the idea that wow, there really is a way of reconfiguring things. <coughs> Those of you who've read a little bit about this, there are opportunities to reconfigure business models. Think about Airbnb. Airbnb has reconfigured the business model to allow people to rent out their own rooms to replace a hotel. Now, in the beginning it sounded like kind of a goofy little idea, but today, Airbnb is renting out more rooms per night than the largest hotel in the United States. 6,000 rooms MGM granted in Las Vegas. If, if Airbnb and their competitor HomeAway, if they can grow at just 7% a year for the next 20 years, that's the same as all of the new capacity that's planning to be put online for hotels in the world. Think about that. Just 7%. These companies are doubling or growing at 50% of those kinds of growth, growth numbers. So just awareness that we can do this is, is one of the biggest challenges. There are legal and hurt, the regulatory hurdles um, uh, for peer-to-peer -peer car sharing. Uh, we actually got a law passed here in California to clear up insurance rules so that you can enable it. Now, some of you are going to say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> do something where you have to get a law passed. The interesting part of that story is, we got a law passed. Nine months, <laughs> we went to the legislature, 
And nine months later, we have a law. Unbelievable. I, I couldn't believe it. So we have people who want to help us, who want to help this, this idea, these set of ideas succeed. And they're everywhere. Sometimes they just need to know that there's this opportunity, like, for example, in the California legislature. It's not just about, uh, you know, part of the reason why these laws are there is because there's a bunch of entrenched interests that want to keep things the way they are. And they're threatened by these kinds of new ideas. The hotel lobby in New York passed a law to try to stop the expansion of Airbnb. Now, it's a totally unenforceable law. But the point is that Airbnb is growing so fast and so significantly that it's threatening the established hotel industry in New York. That's what we want. We want companies growing so fast, so virally, that they actually start threatening the establishment. And there's another challenge, which is uh, we still need, even though we've got a baseline of, of trust that's now out there because of social networks, we need even more. I think it's one of the significant challenges around almost all uh, these companies, whether you're talking about kind of these peer-to-peer -peer ideas uh, around car sharing or, or apartment sharing or whatever, uh, but also we think about finance and all those kinds of ideas. Uh, almost always there's an element of trust that needs to be enhanced in, in all these. And there are lots of ways of doing that. Um, and then finally, go to the last slide. Um, we're going to win. We're going to win because what we're doing is addressing something that I think is like a fundamental human need using uh, a set of tools and a set of technology that are just on a relentless, relentless improvement. Um, and that same kind of sort of bottled up human desire to do something better that's resulted in things like the Arab Spring are at work here. Because people want more community. People want to be more loved. People want to be connected to their neighbors. Um, they don't want to be sitting isolated in their own little cocoon, driving in their own little cocoon, isolated from everyone else. There is a latent desire that I think a lot of these ideas tap into. Um, that, that are, I think, inevitable. And I'm looking forward to hearing more about ideas and percolation of ideas that start with, with an event like this um, and, and grow as this community continues to grow. So I'm excited to be here. I am thrilled that you guys are here. And this is the start. You guys are at the start of something that is fundamental and new and you're here at the beginning of it. So thank you for being here.